guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to recommend some of my favorite standalone science fiction and fantasy novels. So I got an anonymous ask pretty recently on Tumblr asking me for some recommendations for standalones because this person couldn't really get into series. So this is going to be science fiction and fantasy only because a lot of contemporary is standalone, but I've already done a contemporary recommendations video, which I will link on the screen. I did that fairly recently, and I don't really read enough contemporary to have to really update that. So I feel like this person was leaning towards fantasy anyway, because I talked about series and contemporary doesn't have a lot of series anyway. So I read into some of these things, but this is a good starter pack for people who want to get into fantasy, but maybe don't want to get into long fantasy trilogies and science fiction. But let's be real, most of these are going to be fantasy because I'm still trying to dip my toes into science fiction myself. So let's get a few out of the way first, shall we? The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. You guys knew it was coming. It's my favorite book of all time. So this is about a magical circus competition that takes place every so often and what happens around it and the circus is its own atmosphere. And I'm really not doing it justice because I talk about it all the time. So if you're new to my channel, if you've only seen this video, you're probably like, damn dude, can you explain this? But like, I talk about this all the time. So I will link my review for it on the screen and most of you will know how I feel about this and that you should have already read it if you haven't yet. Similarly, we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is a great introduction to fantasy if you are not used to it, if you are a mostly YA reader even and you want to get into adult fantasy. This is a nice like Bridgeway book. It's definitely an adult fantasy, but it is good for people who are used to reading YA. It is set in a place that is surrounded by a magical wood that is kind of evil and about a guy named the dragon who takes a girl every 10 years or so and doesn't do anything bad or anything, just has a girl every 10 years. We don't really know what happens. But he defends the village from the wood. He's a very powerful wizard, blah, blah, blah. And of course, our main character gets chosen one year and everything kind of takes off from there. It's great. I wish I would have more books than this. I wish there was actually a series because it speaks to me on a lot of levels. It has a lot of like Eastern European folklore mixed into here. It's awesome. Then we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender. This is a beautiful, beautiful book. It is technically a YA, but it definitely reads darker than that at times. This is a magical realism type story and it's gorgeous. It's about a girl that is born with wings and it tells the story of her, her mother, and her grandmother. It's kind of broken into those three parts and it's like a family legacy type story. It's beautiful and I love it. Then we have The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey. This is an Aladdin retelling, but it's really focused on the Ginny, and the Ginny is a female in here. And I wish this could be expanded into even more because the Ginny culture in here is like really cool, and I wish there was more of it. But sadly, it is a standalone, but it's a really good standalone. Speaking of retellings from the ladies' perspective, we have Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. This is a very dark YA retelling of Peter Pan told from Tiger Lily's perspective. It talks about like mental health and assault and all these things. And it's very sad, but so good. And one that I still think about to this day. And again, I read it like three years ago. Then we have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. As of the filming of this video, this is still a standalone. He is talking about writing a sequel, companion, something, but right now it's still a standalone. So I don't want to hear about it. It's still a standalone. And I'm sure at once that gets written, it will still be like something that you could kind of treat like a standalone. This is a lot of fun. It's one of the books in his Cosmere universe. It's an adult fantasy. And if you don't want to get into his like giant series, even though you kind of are because it's part of the Cosmere, but like you're not because you don't need to continue if you don't want to, this is a good one to get into. It's a lot more character driven and like politically focused than action focused. So if that's more your thing, then try this one out. The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan is an adult standalone and it takes place in a futuristic world. It's kind of like dystopian-esque, but it doesn't really feel like dystopian, like post-apocalyptic-y. The world is mostly covered in water and this follows a kind of almost magical, you can't really tell, circus that's on the water and stuff in boats. And there's a couple different characters that it follows, but it is another kind of dark story. There's stuff about like silky myths and kind of like Celtic myths, folklore more than myths brought into it, which is really cool. And it just has like a dark misty quality to it. Like this cover is kind of how the story feels. If you want to get into a shorter story, you can try The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is a tiny little novella and it follows a character who is going back to his hometown for a funeral and he stumbles onto some neighbors that he used to have and he kind of relives a story that he's still not sure if it was real or fake and it's very dark, kind of twisty, very Neil Gaiman, if you're used to Neil Gaiman, and it's beautiful. Highly recommend. Then we have The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Vecker. This is a more historical fiction fantasy. It follows a Gollum and a Ginny in New York City in 
I feel like it's almost the turn of the century, but I'm forgetting exactly the time period that's happening. But it follows their stories. They are very separate and they eventually start to interact. But the Gollum is a part of the Jewish society within New York and the Ginny is a part of the Syrian, I believe, society that's living there. And it's kind of the clash of cultures and them learning to be human when they're both decidedly not human and it's beautiful. If you've already read The Night Circus and you like it, this is a book that feels similar to that in the atmosphere. Like New York has its own kind of character. It's a lot slower and it's a lot just like character driven. It doesn't have like the romance quality that The Night Circus has, so if you go into it looking for that I wouldn't expect that. But it has like the characters and like the family, found family dynamic and all of that kind of stuff. So I really love this one. Also very good on audiobook. Then we have Deathless by Catherine M. Valente. This one I'm hesitant to recommend, but it's also good and interesting and weird and like half people might like it and half people not. But this is a story that I've done a full review on, so I'll link that on the screen to give you a better idea kind of what this is about. It follows a lot of like Russian and Eastern European mythology and you're definitely kept at arm's length, but it follows a girl who gets tied in with the character of Koshi the Deathless. If you're familiar with myth at all, you have like Baba Yaga in here and a lot of different characters that come into play with that. And it's very interesting, but it's hard to recommend because it's very weird and I still don't even really know what the story was about. It's beautiful if you're used to Catherine Valente's writing. It's gorgeous and stunning and there's so many great lines, but like I still don't know what it's quite about. But if you like a dark and twisty story, you'll like this. Give it a shot. Then we have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is another one that's kind of historical, you know, depending on how you consider the myths. Are they historical? Are they not? Blah blah blah. So it's kind of historical mixed with fantasy, but it definitely has that mythology base to it. It feels like its own myth. She definitely mixed in all those mythological elements from the Odyssey and the Iliad and everything. This follows Achilles and Patroclus and their story and their love, and it's tragic. I'm not gonna say it's not tragic. If you are at all familiar with Greek myth, you know that it's tragic like, all the time. So don't go into it expecting anything less than that. But it's beautiful, it's beautifully written, and I highly, highly recommend it. So those are it for my standalone, like full-blown standalones, but I have a few that I want to mention that aren't standalones, they're companions, but you can treat them as standalones, you know? These books are kind of the bridge between like standalone and series because you can choose not to read on if you don't want to, but then if you want a little bit more you can read on the companions kind of, you know? But you don't have to. That's what's great about companions. The first one is The Star Touched Queen by Roshni Chakshi. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling with Indian mythology and folklore mixed into it. There is a companion story now that follows different characters within the same world, but there's not really a ton of crossover and you can read them completely separately and like it doesn't matter. So I definitely recommend this one. I like them both. The other one is The Crown of Wishes. I like them both, but this one is Hades Persephone, so it's obviously my favorite. Then for some science fiction, I think maybe the only science fiction almost, like you know, how I am. That is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Again, this does have a companion story that's now out, but I don't think you have to like read either one of them if you don't want to, obviously. But this one can definitely read as a standalone. It's about a gang of people who are working together on a spaceship, all these different species, all these different aliens working together and their stories, and it's a really good like character study, and they're like a little found family, and you know how I feel about them. So I love this one. My other science fiction e type read is For Darkness Shows the Stars by Diana Peterfrund. This is a Jane Austen's persuasion retelling that's set in kind of a dystopian world. I wouldn't really worry too much about the dystopian side of it though because it's not really good with the world building, but everything else about it is really great. And if you like angst and you like persuasion and you know what persuasion's about and how angsty it is, you'll like this. And you don't need to read The Companion because I read this in one day and still haven't finished reading The Companion. The Companion takes place like 300 years after this and has no connection whatsoever. It's just in the same world, so this is a standalone in my eyes. And lastly, we have Wicked by Gregory Maguire. This is a part of a series, but again, they're kind of companions and continuations and whatever, and Wicked is obviously the most famous. It's the one that the play was based on, but the play is nothing like the book. And I read the book years ago and it still has stuck with me. I didn't like it a ton when I first read it, and now I like really have a soft spot for it. It's very dark, it's very twisty, the characters are very complex and morally gray, and it's not as happy-go-lucky as the play is at all. At all. It's, it's not. So if you like dark and twisty things and you don't need to have a perfectly wrapped up conclusion, I would definitely recommend this. I don't think that you need to like read later on in the series to get a wrapped up conclusion. I think that the story just is not gonna have a wrapped up conclusion. They're all like companions and stuff, but 
highly recommend this one. I have no desire to read on past this into the other companions. This is its own story. So that is it for some of my favorite standalone science fiction and fantasy novels. Comment down below and let me know some of your favorite standalone SFF reads. I'm always interested in jumping into those because it's so much easier than jumping into long series. Am I right? So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye! <laughs>